of the consciousness of uh, the Irish idiom in uh, English language. Uh, Ulysses is a perfect example. I, I could, but won't uh, go on at some length uh, about the uh, book. Um, it's a perfect example of uh, the way in which the Irish consciousness could run through uh, the English language and form new formations that uh, really gave insights into uh, Irish identity and, uh, and the language, uh, the English language itself. Um, that wasn't, as I say, always easy to know. Uh, and in decades gone by, English literary studies would have encompassed uh, American, Canadian, Australian, Irish, Scottish literature, etc., without necessarily identifying those uh, clearly. It was uh, very much uh, through the work of and leadership of such as Professor Greg and Yashin that this identification became clearer. And that uh, what is widely acknowledged now as a, uh, an entirely uh, strong idiom in the English language uh, became better identified. I think we, we look forward in uh, future years to a uh, Centre for Irish Studies developing and we look forward to further uh, awareness of uh, Irish literary uh, tradition and strength uh, in the English language. And we're able to do so through the, the work of uh, Professor Takash uh, and others indeed, but I think uh, the leadership he showed in, uh, in decades is, uh, is something to be very much recognised. Now, for those of you who pay some attention to uh, central banks, um, and these days I'm afraid I'm professionally obliged to pay attention to central banks almost every day, um, they're not usually known for their literary prowess. Um, now, our central bank uh, issued in uh, April of this year, if I'm not wrong, I often am, um, a uh, coin, a commemorative coin for uh, James Joyce and uh, 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 Ulysses. Um, the coin uh, became a subject of controversy almost immediately. Uh, I can only imagine that James Joyce would have relished this uh, because it contains a misquotation. Uh, it has added the, um, the word that where there should be no such word. Um, I wouldn't pretend to begin to give you all of the quotation and its, uh, and its misquotation. But uh, I think it is, uh, it is something that would be truly uh, amusing to James Joyce himself, but even a coin that was issued in his honor was a work in progress. Uh, he was a man known for writing and rewriting, for editing, re-editing, and working to his very um, death on, uh, on pieces to, uh, to refine the writing. Well, um, it's probably not the case that they're doing too much about this in the Central Bank, but the coin became an immediate sellout. Uh, it was a very limited edition and uh, was immediately sought uh, for the very fact that it contains the error. Now, very few of them exist uh, outside of Ireland, but we do have one here ourselves this evening. And, uh, <laughs> uh, what I would like to do by way of uh, saying thank you and recognition to Professor Takash is to make a presentation to him. If he wants the face value of it, it's uh, 10 euros. Um, <laughs> I, I don't suggest that immediately, but if he'd like to place it on eBay, I think you'd get a rather uh, higher price. But I would hope that in fact, if it contains an error, we might get uh, an article from you or uh, a piece of analysis that would be spawned from this. But in all events, I would like to just uh, offer recognition and thanks for such an enormous amount of work that's continuing, I might add, and that we've uh, to not only in your uh, retirement, but your continued uh, active uh, work in uh, the jo Joyce uh, Society of Hungary and um, in, uh, in working with us on uh, increasing the consciousness both of Joyce and of, of Irish literature generally here in Hungary. So my great thanks to you on behalf of the embassy. I'd like to make this presentation to you Hope that uh, the the error can be as joined as much as the coin itself. But congratulations to you and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador Kevin. I suppose this is one of those occasions where one is supposed to make a nice little speech. And, um, 
I tend to write. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of, of all the people, my colleagues, friends, students, and the masters I have at my school, who <clears throat> have taken part in this project of Irish studies and, uh, as you uh, said, uh, raising the awareness of a particular Irish tradition in literature and the culture of English speaking uh, people. I became an Irish studies man Hibernal field, or even Hibernal mania, when, as the Irish race had it, it was neither popular nor profitable. <laughs> uh, I must say it has grown uh, more popular. Whether it has grown more profitable, <laughs> that, I can't really doubt so. Uh, but in, in this way, Ireland and the Irish, and uh, the Irish as a people from whom all I have had over the decades is kindness and not that early. In a sense, it has become my I wouldn't say second nation because uh, one doesn't have too many nations. Uh, and one of the damn things is to have them all. But you know, there's such a thing as, as, as people with nationalism and people without nationalism. And there's a third kind of category people with a surrogate nationalism. There are people who don't like the nationalism of their own nation. While they develop um, some kind of a curious, perverse uh, uh, interest in the nationalism of another of, an, of another nation. So, within the limits, I suppose I can say, I'm a solid Irish nationalist, and in this capacity, I want to thank you again. Extremely kind of touching, uh, if you keep saying or testing what I've been trying to do in the last few decades. I hope I was uh, brief enough. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, thank, thanks, Henry. Not at all. Thank you very much.